Hey YouTube, today we're going to be going over different things in Grease Pencil that, that I just think everyone should know. This one is more of a beginner tutorial, but you might actually find something in here that you haven't found in other tutorials, and I'm making it because I haven't found a lot of these things in other tutorials. So, first of all, we start off by going to Edit Preferences. If you don't know, you can move your canvas around like this. All you have to do is go to Key Map and set your middle mouse action to pan instead of orbit. On orbit, it will go around the 3D space like so. But if you have it set to pan, it will move around like this. And we have the way to set the background color. So if you want to set the background color, we go to world, then we go to color, and we change the color. And this will show up in these two views, as we can see, we can also export transparently by going to scene and then we go to film and we click transparent and then anything we export will be transparent. We can see in our render view and it's transparent because it's checkered. Then we have the cutter tool. For those who don't know, the cutter tool will just cut whatever is in between two things. So let's say I was trying to make a drawing. I can just use the cutter tool and cut all the lines that I don't want to keep that are in between two strokes. This is really helpful if we're making some quick drawings. Another tool that I don't think a lot of people went over is funnily enough, the eyedropper tool. So for the eyedropper tool, we just want to, you know, draw something. We're either going to use a material or a vertex color. When we use a material and we use the eyedropper, we click on it and then we'll see that it creates a new material that we're automatically on. We just need to make sure we're on material and we can make sure to make a stroke or a fill. So if you wanted to make it a fill, of course, you just go and make it a fill. You can drop the color, just drag and drop it like that if it's not already on fill. Then if we want to Use a vertex color, we can once again just select it like a regular eyedropper. But we're gonna make wanna make sure we go to palette instead. So we're gonna select it. And then when you click on vertex color, you'll see that our color is at the bottom of our palette. If we change to a fill material, it will fill. Going forward, we also have holdouts. If you don't know what holdout is, it basically erases any material. It makes it transparent, even though it's an actual stroke. So if we select holdout on our material, we can see that it will erase with our strokes. So I'm not sure why, but the holdouts are showing up white right now. <laughs> but I'm actually kind of glad the holdout fill is not working right now because I'm glad to say that it has issues anyway. And what I'd recommend using instead is checking out my add-on video and you should use Niji G Pen and use the eraser tool that comes with that add-on instead when you want to just make something transparent because as we can see when we do this no issues and that's kind of funny that blender blender always has a new issue for you to see every time you use it and it, it really blows your mind but going forward we're going to use I'm gonna show how the fill tool works. 
So, in my experience, The fill tool works best when you make sure this eyeball is selected. So it will fill in all things it's coming across right now. But you can set it to you can set it to strokes or edit lines, which would cause two different results. And set it to visible or whichever one of these fits what you, what you need to do, fill. Going forward, make sure to change to a fill material. And there we go. And if we want it to fill more accurately, we can just move with our middle mouse after we click. and it will fill in between the blue lines. So with this, we actually want it to be less accurate and not close things off. So we're going to lower the blue lines so everything gets into the fill. And this it happens when you're using visual aids, it will show the, the blue lines. If you don't click visual aids, then it will just fill without showing you anything. And make sure you're, you're double clicking just so it fills. Then if you're not using it already, some tools you should definitely use are in the sculpting part where we have thickness, smoothing, and grab. So smoothing will just smooth out your strokes. As we can see here, they get cleaner. You can improve the strength and include how improve how big your brush is and it just keeps smoothing out your line so it looks cleaner. Now we have thickness that will make your strokes thicker. You can increase the strength for thicker lines. Then we have grab, which is very convenient. And with grab, you can just move your things around easily, fix up drawings. You can also click on select stroke mode and then select a specific stroke. With this enabled, so you can see which stroke you're editing. And it will only grab that stroke and allow you to edit it. You can also do that with points only. And then it only edits the very specific points instead of your whole stroke. Aside from that, we also have box deform. You'll, for box deform, you'll just want to make sure you go to edit preferences and you have grease pencil tools installed and you can install this by going to system allowing online access and go to get extensions and download grease pencil tools so with grease pencil tools enabled we can click Control t or we can just go to click n to open the side menu We can click Grease Pencil Tools and we can click Box Deform. And from there, we can edit our proportions just like in a drawing application. So then we just click Space or Enter to confirm our change. We can also get even more specific with this by clicking Control in any direction to make <laughs> more points to edit by you can also click one to nine if you're not emulating a numpad in the settings and then we just confirm great you can also make your stroke more straight with, with 
Grease pencil tools, like so. And that's cool. Grease pencil tools also allows you to flip your camera. And then you can set options in grease pencil tools, set shortcuts. And then you can click Y to navigate your layers. Just select layers, add layers, opacity, visibility, locking. You can scrub the timeline, put whatever, you can scrub the timeline by putting whatever shortcut you want. And you can rotate the canvas. And then you just click reset rotation. I wouldn't recommend rotating your canvas without first saving your rotation. Because then when you rotate, you can always just click reset rotation and it will go back. So what I do is click save rotation on the regular rotation. And then I add this, I add reset rotation to my quick favorites. And speaking of quick favorites, if you don't know about that, you click Q and you have a whole access of whatever you right click. You can just go back to whatever shortcut it is. You can even put tools on this. I could add brush to my quick favorites. Click Q, brushes, Oop, wrong one, draw. And now I can draw. And then finally for our tools, we have Grease Pencil Tool Wheel, which is another add-on that you just, click, once again, go to get extensions, you download Grease Pencil Tool Wheel. Then you go to the add-ons, go to its settings, and you select a keyboard shortcut to use it with. You click your keyboard shortcut and you can select any tool that you have in your layout. So I only put it for three modes, but you can put as many tools as you want here. It does exclude some sub tools like lasso tool and selection, which I really wish it had, but you can add more to your tool wheel. And then you can also customize what, how, what order everything will be in by going up here and moving them up. It will show you which direction everything is in from here. So yeah. And now that we're done with the tools, I guess we'll just show a few things where you, that you might not know how to find. If you click view and click set preview range, you can also click P on your timeline. And this will set your in and out points for your animation. And now it's just playing frames 40 to 100 about. We can also see here that we can set our floor whenever we want to see 3D here you can also set a grid and different guides in here then we have our different rendering views this is the best rendering view for drawing at least if you want to see colors because if you're in this one you only see the outline well you only see in black and white and this will only show the outline and this shows us our full render if we put lights or anything like that. As you can see, these are my regular colors. This is with lights. We can put on our onion skin from here. We can also fade any layers we're not using. And then when we, you see when we go to different layers, we'll either show or hide us. Then if we want to take auto keyframe off or on, we just click this button. So with auto keyframe on, when we draw, it will create a new frame automatically. If we take it off and move to the next frame, it won't draw one automatically. We'll have to add a keyframe. You can edit multiple frames by clicking multi-frame up here. And if we select multiple frames, we can do edits, like move everything on multiple frames, then unselect it to stop showing multiple frames and everything is moved as we can see.
we can click additive drawing to have our same frame and then add to it. So if we put back on auto keyframe, it will create keep our same drawing but add lines to it. And then we can also draw behind our strokes by clicking draw behind right here. And then as you can see, it goes behind the black. And this is really good for if you ever want to use fills on the same layer or anything or you just have things that simply need to go behind anything. All right, so that's it. Oh, editing this in post. And I forgot one thing I forgot to mention was active smoothing. So but active smoothing, rather than making us use this absolutely terrible, slow stabilization method, even on its lowest, thing it's it doesn't feel too natural we can instead use active smoothing by going to advance and active smooth and turn this up i can much more easily make the lines i want to make in this program by drawing with active smooth at a higher level The problem with this stabilization is it kind of curves everything you're drawing when you're trying to get sharp lines, you see? So, try out active smoothing and you might really enjoy your brushes much more. Um, I'm going to follow this up with another tutorial that's more advanced, more for mid-tier grease pencil users. And then I'm going to also make a brush tutorial for Grease Pencil. So just stay tuned and I hope you enjoyed. Drop a comment, drop a like, appreciate it.